Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what's up squad? So, how you guys doing? Everybody okay? It's been a really rough week, huh? <laughs> it sure has. That lunar eclipse, man, on Friday the 27th was, was a doozy, huh? <sighs> um, yeah, I, uh, I had, it's funny because last weekend, um, right around the time that I put out the last weekly conversation, I was saying to myself, um, Eric, I don't know if I should really take any personal readings this week. Maybe I should suspend that. And then a bunch of them started coming in. So I was like, you know what? I think I can handle it because I was feeling really good in the beginning of the week. Yeah, well, I probably should, I should have listened to myself <laughs> because come Thursday, I, um, I ended up, like I was able to get through a few of them that I scheduled, but I ended up having to postpone, reschedule the rest of them because I was just not in a good place. <laughs> I was not in a good place. Um, I couldn't, I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough in the fact that I could stay balanced and grounded enough to be able to really be of service to people. And I didn't want to have, to, I didn't want to give anybody a bad reading. And I definitely did not want to start projecting my own bullshit on, you know, on someone else's situation. So for those of you of, um, whom I've rescheduled readings. I apologize for that, but don't worry. We'll get it done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> today is very much a fuck it kind of day. <laughs> As you can see, um, I'm, you know, my hair's not really done. We need to redo the manicure. I'm wearing a holy shirt. Granted, this is like my favorite, my, one of my favorite shirts ever. It's a Britney Spears shirt. It's from the Onyx Hotel tour. See, look at that. Look at that. Bam! Onyx Hotel. What? I'm so sad that you can't really like see the image much anymore. But there she is. Yay. So I'm very much in comfort mode right now. Um, the Virgo and Leo in me are kind of freaking out at the moment. They're like, the, the Virgo is in me is kind of like, how dare you go on camera like that right now? And the Leo's like, well, can you at least like do your hair or something? And the Taurus in me is like, I don't care. <laughs> So, Taurus wins. Yay! <laughs> um, whoops. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm a mess. I'm all over the place here. <sighs> okay. So, it's very much a fuck it kind of day. It's probably going to be like that for the rest of the week. It's okay. It's okay. Just get through it. Um, I really don't have any much else to say. I hope you guys are doing all right. Um... I know if you we're all here like if you if you guys need to talk if you just want to like vent or whatever I could I really encourage you guys to like really you know communicate with amongst yourselves and with me I'm here even though I may not necessarily be able to do a reading for you I'm still here we can still talk um but uh yeah I actually oh for those of you who are in the New York City area and we're thinking of coming to see me tomorrow Monday at Om Shanti I doubt I'm gonna be there I haven't really spoke to them about it yet, but I already, that, that, uh, spark of in inspiration came to me while I was meditating this morning. Um, and my grandmother's kind of like in the back of my head, like, um, follow through with that. She literally just said that. <laughs> follow through with that. Trust your intuition on that one. It's probably a good idea. So yeah, I won't be at Om Shanti tomorrow unless i'm gonna i haven't again i haven't spoken to them yet unless there's some of you that have already you know booked something of which i am unaware at the moment um i am most likely not gonna be there because homegirl needs a day off <laughs> i mean i'm just so freaking busy and then with all of this like this planetary shit that's happening like i am freaking exhausted guys like there's so much ascension happening you guys are probably feeling a lot of ascension symptoms right now. Headaches, nausea, um, ringing in the ears. I know like during my meditations, the ringing is intense. Like it's really intense. Um, what else? Discomfort, purging. Lord, the purging. I mean, damn. <laughs> but 
Um, it's okay, guys. Damn near everything is in retrograde right now. Will be until about the 18th, I think. That's what I heard. I'm not sure. But we're all going to get through this together. Yeah? Okay. Enough rambling. Let's get into the cards. <laughs> Let's get into the cards. Um, I, I just wanted to say that... Uh, um, I was shuffling the cards before I started the reading here, and, you know, I like to shuffle them just to, like, wake them up a little bit, get in tune with it, start to channel the energies into the situation, <laughs> and I was shuffling the deck for the Divine Feminine, and the Knight of Swords came flying out of the deck. <laughs> so, Divine Feminine is pretty heated right now. My ears are ringing, my, my ears are ringing as I'm starting to say this. Divine Feminine, you are probably pretty heated right now. I know I am. Some shit popped off this week. <laughs> sure did. Um, but on top of that, there's a lot of purging happening. So um, Divine Feminine, be very cautious. Be very careful um, of how you communicate with people this week. Um, actually, I'm hearing into the future, too. Like, as we move through the residual full moon energies, eclipse energies, which apparently we're going to, are, we're going to be feeling for, like, the next six months, <laughs> just be just be cautious, be tactful, um, don't go flying off the handle, don't go, uh, be careful, just don't be reactionary, yeah? Like, try and save yourself some of the trouble and not, um... You know, don't react. There's no reason to react. I'm sorry. I gotta move this. My room's, my room's a little bit of a mess at the moment, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Um, just be cautious. Be careful. Um, uh, think before you speak. Think before you act. Um, you know, yeah, you get it. But you're probably feeling pretty aggressive right now. And that's okay, because ultimately that's allowing you to purge too. That is a part of the purging that's happening. But um, be be kind to yourself. Practice some self-care. You know, really work on meditation. Meditation is really going to help you. Um, you may even want to not watch Twin Flame readings, videos, or anything. Like, the, even, even like the Zodiac readings, you probably don't want to watch those right now. Um, so that, that means that you need to click off of this. I totally get it. <laughs> I totally get it. But um, I really wanted to bring a conversation forward for the collective this week because we're all, we're all going through it. Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Okay, we're all going through it right now. So I just wanted to be here for us, yes? Okay, so let's, let's get started. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Everybody settle in, take a deep breath, let's connect. Twin Flame Collective. Hey Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flame Collective uh, to serve the highest good of all involved. Specifically, please help us understand a little more about what's going on post full lunar eclipse in Aquarius, yes? Please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine represented by the deck on the left and the Divine Feminine represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are interacting with each other as individuals and as divine twin flames. Also, please give us an accurate representation of how they are, how these energies are interacting within us as individuals. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start with the Divine Masculine deck. Are you okay, Divine Masculine? This card wanted to jump out. The Eight of Swords and the Page of Wands. Um, yeah. Mostly the eight, eight, eight of Swords. Shh, you are really between a rock and a hard place right now. 
Um, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, Divine Masculine, most of the mental anguish that you are feeling right now, uh, and keep in mind, the eight of, underneath the Eight of Swords was the... Is it still there? No. Uh, oh, shit. But there's the devil. No, no. Well, there is the devil. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> so underneath the Eight of Swords is the Page of Wands. And then underneath that, we have the devil. All right? So most of this mental anguish, Divine Masculine, is because of the devil. The, this mental prison that you find yourself in this entrapment, this enslavement I just heard that you're finding yourself in right now is because of the devil energy, codependency, okay? And something I tell people often, very, very often, when it comes to the devil, the devil can only control you if you let him. You at any point can tell that devil to fuck all the way off and never come back and he will never be able to affect you again. Why? Because even the devil cannot circumvent your willpower unless you give him the power to. What's this page of wands situation? Well, the page of wands is you wanting to start something new. You wanting to be more authentic. You wanting to step into your spiritual power. Step into spirituality. Like... Be the spiritual being that you are. Start this path. But you feel trapped and enslaved because of the people and the circumstances around you. That's the devil. <laughs> you, Divine Masculine, you have the power to break yourself out of this prison. You absolutely do. But only you can do it. Nobody else can do it for you. Okay? Okay. Nobody's going to come swooping in. I mean, maybe that's what that Knight of Swords situation is for the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine might want to be able to just charge on in and cut those chains for you, but she can't. You have to do it yourself, Divine Masculine. The Hierophant, your higher self, is speaking to you. And the Queen of Cups, it's time for you. I mean, this is in your deck right now, Divine Masculine. So you might be... You, well, first of all, you're getting downloads from your higher self. I often, especially in this particular deck, I see the Hierophant as our fifth dimensional selves, our higher selves, right? Um, so you're getting downloads from your, your higher self, and your intuition is really coming out. Because other than the High Priestess, or maybe, maybe even the Empress, the Queen of Cups is, like, psychic, crazy psychic, like, like super, super duper psychic, you know? So your psychic abilities are opening up. You are, your intuition is opening up. You're also holding on to your emotions. That The Queen of Cups does that too. Now she was upright, which is a good thing. So you're probably just holding on to your emotions um, in order to make sense of them, in order to like not freak out, not freak out, yeah. But you're also having trouble with that because your emotions are starting to become overwhelming. Why? Because you've been holding on for, to them for so long. And at some point, they're probably going to come roaring out. Um, but ultimately, you know, you got to listen to your higher self. And you've got to listen to your heart and your emotions. All right, one more shuffle for you, Divine Masculine. I didn't say it before, but this is a general reading, guys, okay? So only take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't, okay? All right, cool. Divine Feminine. How are you, honey? Yeah, the struggle is real, isn't it? But you got this. You were made for it. <laughs> Yeah, you hear the enthusiasm in my voice, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm still seeing white for you, Divine Feminine, so there is still a lot of protection around you. Divine protection, divine guidance. Okay, flyer. Jeez, Divine Feminine, this Ten of Pentacles just keeps coming out for you. The lovers in reverse. 
with the Ten of Pentacles. Oh, shit. The King of Swords in reverse. The Ten of Pentacles and the Two of Swords. Now, the Two of Swords has that moon on it, so we're definitely dealing with some post-moon energy. This. The Lovers and the King of Swords in reverse is speaking directly to my situation. You see, I'm shaking, right? Something popped off, didn't it, Divine Feminine? It's so funny because I was listening to one of Aluna Ash's videos this week. I think it was, I think it was Friday. And I was at work doing my thing, getting ready. And I was listening to her while I was going. And she mentioned, some of you may have gotten to a fight with your twin. And I bust out laughing. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> um, uh, all right, look. The King of Swords in reverse with the lovers in reverse. Okay, the King of Swords is the, is the divine masculine here. Um, divine feminine. The divine masculine is really struggling right now. He does not like what he sees in front of him. In some cases, Divine Masculine, he might be blaming you for whatever is going... I'm sorry, Divine Feminine. In some cases, the Divine Masculine might be blaming you for what's going on in his or her life. But that has nothing to do with you, Divine Feminine. Because you did not create the life that the Divine Masculine is experiencing. I mean, okay, yes... Okay, yes, you both, cre you both agreed to come down here and experience certain things. Um, but ultimately, you know, the, the, the specific circumstances of each other's lives have nothing to do with our, have nothing, have nothing to do with the other. They have everything to do with ourselves. We create our own realities, okay? Um... So when it comes to, so, okay, so some might have, you, you might have gotten into a fight with your twin. Um, you may have, there just may have been some, some memories that have resurfaced that have reopened old wounds. Um, but all of this is kind of putting this, this Ten of Pentacles situation into greater focus for you. Okay. Now. This is three, re three, three, weeks, three weeks in a row that the Ten of Pentacles has come out for the Divine Feminine, at least on my channel. Ultimately, this is what you need to be focusing on right now, Divine Feminine. The Ten of Pentacles. And what is the Ten of Pentacles? Well, the Ten of Pentacles is more than just a romantic life, a family life, whatever. Your Ten of Pentacles is your ultimate fulfillment materially. So that also includes business, finances, okay? Um, this is, this in terms of, we'll say in terms of Twin Flame situation, this is you being on mission, you doing what it is you came here to do in this lifetime, okay? And that can, that looks different for everybody. Not everyone is going to be a reader or an energy healer or stuff like that. I mean, this literally could be anything. But ultimately, it's what you're passionate about. So what you need to be focused on right now, Divine Feminine, is manifesting your life, your career, the, the, the things you want to experience in your life, other than what you want to experience with your twin, your Divine Masculine, okay? Two of Swords, this is definitely the moon energy because we do have this moon up here. But I'm also picking up that you, a, a lot of the Divine Feminines are still at odds. Why? Because they don't want to have to start their mission. Oh, what is that? Damn it. The Page of Cups in reverse. <laughs> okay. But the Divine Feminine, you're, you're still, you're in a, between a rock and a hard place too. Because you're still in a mode of, I don't want to start my mission. 44. I just saw 44. Or maybe even you'd feel like you can't start your mission without your Divine Masculine. And that is not the case. 
That is not the case. Oh boy, guys. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Divine Feminine, you you just gotta get moving. You have to. We need you. Okay, you're... Ultimately, the real goal, or the real object, or... or oh, who's texting me? Oh God, who's texting me? Um, the real mission here, the real point, is to do what it is you came here to do. Whether your twin is in your life or a part of it or not. Like, yes. But, and gosh, it's so crazy. I, like, had a premonition that I was going to be saying these exact words to you, Divine Feminine. And here it is. Wow, it's nuts. Um, 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 um. Yes, there are situations where we are very aware that we're going to be working with our twins. For the most part... Twin flames are going to be working together in some capacity, whether that is owning a business together, working at the same job, you know, ha whatever. However that looks for you. Yes, that is part of the deal. But that's down the road, okay? You need to come into union with yourself first before you will be in union with your twin. And this is what the Ten of Pentacles is talking about. Being in union with yourself. Having this... Ma see, you see the masculine and feminine energy... Uh, uh, beings there, whatever. That is what you need to have with yourself before you can have that in the in the physical world with your twin, okay? And part of, of coming into union with yourself is being on mission. Doing what it is you came here to do. For example, I'll, we'll put my, since, okay, fine. I'll, I'll say this, give you an example. My mission, as I see it right now, is twofold. The first part is this channel, is this card reading stuff that I do to be of service to people. And that's not just for Twin Flames, that's for everybody, okay? I am here to give you the end of the information you need in that moment to help you make a better decision moving forward in your life so that you can get 22-22 on the counter, so that you can gain clarity for what it is you need to understand better so that you can make the best decision for yourself moving forward. The other half of my mission is music. I'm a musician. Uh, well, I'm a performer, singer, dancer, choreographer, musician, singer, songwriter, producer. But right now, I am very much focused on the production aspect of things. So, um, like, I, I, like, I mean, I've already taught myself to produce music. Um, on my own. And now, since I've been on this whole journey, I mean, actually, to be quite honest, you're, you're on the journey from the moment you're born. But since I became aware of the journey and I started really trying to work on myself, I was inspired to not only start reading cards, but to go back to school. And so now I'm in school for, um, I'm learning, I'm getting like the official training of music production. And I'm also learning to be an engineer because ultimately I want to own a studio. I want to own, I've even wanted to own a record label and I wanted, and I wanted to be of service in that way. Even though I'm a singer, songwriter, performer myself, I really find a lot of fulfillment in producing for other people, developing um, work for other people, developing artists, like stuff like that. So the equivalent of this Ten of Pentacles and the Two of Swords here, and when it comes to the Divine Feminine, in my situation would be me saying, oh... Okay, well, yeah, I want to go back to school, but you know what? I'm going to wait until I'm in union with my Divine Masculine before I can do that. Skirt! No, no. <laughs> no, 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 Divine Feminine. you got to be doing what you need to do for your mission. Okay? you got to start with the individual. you got to start with the self. Come into union with yourself. And then, union will happen. I don't even know what... <sighs> okay, so you get it, right, Divine Feminine? Yes, we get it. Okay, awesome. The Knight of Cups in reverse came out for this situation here. I don't even know what I want to say about it. 
I don't even know what I want to say about this right now. Um, and look, guys, I need you to understand something. I'm not trying to project my situation into the cards here, but it's going to come out. Why? Because I'm on this journey too. Okay? So I'm trying to be as objective as possible. But this is happening for, a, for damn near all of us. Like, this is happening. For, for a ton of us. It may not look the same all around, but it's still happening, okay? It's still happening. The Knight of Cups in reverse. Divine Masculine might be torn to pieces right now. He doesn't want... He or she is feeling the energy, okay? But doesn't want to give... Well, that's not even true. It's the night, the Knight of Cups is here, but it's reversed, okay? So there is, so the, the Divine Masculine wants to provide or give some sort of emotional value. Probably wants to, I want to cry right now. Probably wants to talk about what he's going, what he or she is going through. Going through. Probably wants to reach out and make an offer and, and be honest about how they truly feel. But he's got this knight, uh, I'm sorry, he's got this king of swords in reverse energy that is just twisting his head up. Not really able to see things very clearly right now. Goodness gracious, I want to cry. This is heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. So if you did, if, if some shit did pop off with your twins recently, please do not take it personally. Because it is not, it is not what it seems. Okay? All right. Divine feminine. Oh, yeah. Yellow. Willpower. You're taking your power back. Just be careful, because remember, I told you, that Knight of Swords came flying out of your deck. It did, it, did, it did come out upright. I will say that. It came out upright. But just be tactful. As tactful as you possibly can. Okay? Final shuffle. And my ears are ringing again. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with you, Divine Feminine. As usual. Overall energies, we've got... Damn it, I knew this was coming too. Oh, man. Four of Wands. But, but honestly, like, yes, okay, great. This is, the, this is the Union card. This is the Twin Flame card. Okay, great. But, wow, and I was thinking about this this morning, and I had another flash of this card coming out and saying this is more about the Union within yourself. And look at what's on the bottom of the deck. This is about union with yourself, Divine Feminine. You have to find this union within before union in the external can be realized. You need to understand that you and your twin are always connected. You need to understand that you and your twin are one in the same. Okay? You need to understand that union, for the most part, has probably already happened in the 5D. And I'm picking, I'm getting right now that if you've been feeling a lot of um, sexual energy when it comes to your twin, um, Aluna Ash has been saying that, you know, this is because you guys are merging spiritually, um, which is evidence that union is happening energetically, all right? <sighs> yeah, the alchemist. I mean, you're really manifesting right now, Divine Feminine. I saw that card too. What else? Ooh, the Page of Pentacles in reverse. And finally, the Two. Ooh, yep. The Two of Cups in reverse. All right, so check it out. Divine Feminine, you, uh, from what I'm getting here, you understand that you need to, well, you might, some of you might understand it already, but some of you also need to get on the bus and start doing your mission work is what I just heard. 
stop waiting for your divine masculine before you start doing your mission work. Because ultimately, that is an, that is an, an imbalance within the self. Two of Cups in reverse. Two of Cups in reverse is saying, number one, that you need to find this union within. But number two, it is literally confirmation, literal confirmation that you don't need to be with your twin in order to do you. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to say it. The princess or page of pentacles in reverse is not, how do I want to put this, is not allowing the representation in the physical world of how things may not necessarily be progressing get you down or stop you. Don't worry about it. You are, or you need to be, or you're going to be leaving all that behind and working on this union with yourself, alchemy, the magician, manifesting your life, manifesting what it is you need, you want. What is your mission? What are your goals? What do you want for your life? other than your divine masculine. You, it, it'll come in time, but what do you want now, divine feminine? What it is you want to manifest? Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into the storyline here. Starting you off with whoop, the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. With? The Five of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. Give me a second here. I'm going to hold my amethyst. Um. <laughs> okay. So what I'm hearing for this is no longer standing around waiting anymore. Feeling left out in the cold. No more allowing yourself to feel like you're left out in the cold, that you lack, that you lack the, that you're unworthy. No more, no more allowing yourself to believe in lack mentality. No more allowing yourself to believe that you can't do it on your own. And it's funny because you don't, I literally just heard that as I was looking at the Nine of Pentacles. It's not like you need to do it. You don't need to do it on your own. There are plenty of people out there, soul family, that are more than willing to help you. Obviously, the universe wants to help you. The universe was willing, ready and willing to give you everything you need, Divine Feminine. You most likely already had it. Have what you need. Most likely. But this is no longer, and, and it's funny because I never really saw the Nine of Pentacles this way, but standing around waiting for someone to come along with all your pentacles, waiting for someone to come complete you and make that 10. Bitch, make your own 10. You're good enough for it. You've got the skills. Make your own 10. Damn it. <laughs> Moving forward. Four of Cups in reverse. I like that. With? Ooh, judgment in reverse. Okay. All right. So obviously, either I've had an impact on you at this moment, or something's getting you, something's shaking you up and getting you on mission. Because this is how. This is how it's been for some time, for some divine feminines. Being called into mission, being called to start your shit. But with the Four of Cups in reverse, oh, with Judgment in reverse, you're not really listening. And with Four of Cups in, your, in reverse, you're like, 
but wait, what about my Divine Masculine? When the universe is trying to hand you this Ace of Cups here, you see that? Saying, don't worry about him or her. Let's get started on our mission. Oh, I don't wanna. No, 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 no. So I, okay, so this can be seen a few ways. Judgment in reverse and the Four of Cups in reverse. This can either be seen as you're stuck in this situation of not wanting to move forward because you're divine, you're not in union. Or finally getting over that and saying, fuck it, let's just go. And to that, the universe says, yes, finally, thank you. <laughs> literally, literally, as I said that, fuck it, let's just go, the universe like cheered like hell. Let's just go. Let's just do it. We've got so much to do. And I don't want to scare anybody. I'm not trying to like... Yeah, it might be a little daunting, but I am like so freaking excited just saying that. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Current challenge, Divine Feminine. Ace of Swords. Upright. Truth. Knowing. That can be challenging, can't it? Whoa. With the Ace of Cups in reverse. Wow, that is a challenge. That's a huge challenge. What does this represent? Well, for starters, this represents knowing that this cup of love is here. Knowing that you want to give this love, obviously, to your Divine Masculine. But knowing that you can't right now, and knowing that he's not going to give it to you either, probably. Knowing that you have to move on, move forward in your life and just do you. Knowing that you can't give this love right now. That's a huge challenge. And it might be so, and, I, and okay, all right, cool. I just picked up on this. It might be so challenging that you really don't even feel like you want to continue with your mission. What should I do that for? Well, if you're in that energy, then you're misunderstanding what the Twin Flame experiment really is. Because ultimately, union with your Divine Masculine, however that would look for you, um, union with your Divine Masculine ultimately is the cherry on top of an already iced cake. And what's the icing? Your mission, Divine Feminine. And who's putting that icing on that cake? You are. And then you get to finish it off. You get to embellish it a little bit with some, with some union. <laughs> and actually, Aluna Ash said it really well. She said at one point, she was like, I don't know why people are in such a rush. Because ultimately, when you come into union with your twin, then it's like really on. I mean, you think you're doing your mission now. Wait until you get into union, honey. Because that's when it really starts. I mean, that's full speed ahead. All systems go. 38, 38, 11, 11. But yeah, that's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge, Divine Feminine. I get it. But you gotta press on. Like I said before, did I say it before? You're made for this? I did say that. You're made for this. Divine Masculine, you're made for this too, by the way. Okay. Upcoming energies for you, Divine Feminine, we have, oh yes, the devil in reverse. And what's the devil for you, Divine Feminine? It is this attachment to outcomes, expectations, needing your Divine Masculine in your life in order to step out on your mission, that kind of thing. It's in reverse. Coupled with... Hallelujah, can I get a motherfucking amen? Ace of Pentacles, upright. The moment you release yourself from all that attachment, all that expectation, all that neediness even. Yeah, I said it. Neediness. 
The moment you release yourself from that divine feminine, you've got a brand new start. And let me tell you, this is absolutely true because I am speaking from experience here. Remember, I'm on this mission with you too, okay? I'm here to help. I'm not here to put you down. I'm not, and, and well, I was gonna say I'm not here to trigger you, but if I am triggering you, good. You gotta learn to embrace your triggers, Divine Feminine. The universe taught me that this week. I mean, I had already started getting into, you know, into that vibration, but man, man, did I learn that lesson this week. I'm sorry, I dove deeper into that lesson this week. <sighs> I love this. I, I love this, Divine Feminine. The devil in reverse with the Ace of Pentacles upright. Good on ya. This is beautiful. That's some beautiful shit right there. Okay, Divine Masculine, it's your turn. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking, guys. <laughs> oh, all right, Divine Masculine. Look at you now. You've got a big old king of pentacles. Okay, so you're focused on your money. You're focused on your career. You're focused on your stability. That's cool. That's good. I'm hearing ultimately that's where you need to be right now. But I also see you starting to master your surroundings in a much different way. King of Pentacles is up right here and I'm picking up an energy of you're really starting to set some boundaries. <clears throat> That's a good thing. You are also taking your power back, Divine Masculine. Booyah. King of Pentacles. Oh, here we go. We're mirroring, guys. Holy shit. Judgment in reverse. Knight of Cups, upright. There's more mirroring because the Knight of Cups came out with the Divine Feminine's flyers. And here's some more mirroring. Knight of Swords, reversed. Remember, I told you that came flying out of the Divine Feminine's deck while I was shuffling before I even started the camera? Well, check it out. When it came out for the Divine Feminine, that shit was upright. Divine Masculine, you got some splaining to do, boo-boo. Because shit popped off, didn't it? The Knight of Swords energy in reverse is very much word vomit. Um, and as a Virgo rising, I know that when I get into certain modes, it happened, actually it happened Friday night. I was hanging out with some friends and someone's one of my friends said something and I and like it was the end of the night we were we were kind of, we were a little you know a little drunk and hanging out and whatever and my friend said my one of my friends said something and I whipped around and I called him a piece of shit right there and immediately after I said it I was like oh damn that was harsh <laughs> but that's that's knight of swords energy in reverse Divine Masculine, I'm sorry guys, I'm just, I'm trying to channel here, but what I was saying, actually I want to go back, what I was saying with like, you know, as a Virgo rising, I, I do, I can get snippy like that. So I understand, I get it, 44 on the counter, 4400, 0, 0. then it was 4401. These number synchronicities are out of control. But anyway, I understand Divine Masculine, but like at some point you've got to take some responsibility for your actions. Because the Knight of Swords energy in reverse is it's just irresponsible. It's very much like the Knight of Wands energy, but and that's, and I'm going to say it's upright, like Knight of Wands upright, because the Knight of Wands is, is very fast moving. Um, and in reverse, it can be destructive because it's, you can get burned. Well, with the Knight of Swords, it's more destructive because you can slice and dice someone up real good. 
without even a care in the world. That's not good. At all. <laughs> okay? At all. Now, you've got judgment in reverse. So just like the Divine Feminine, you're not listening to the call. Or at least you're trying to ignore it. You're stuck here. You're, you're so rooted here in your King of Pentacles energy that you don't, you, you don't even want to hear it for the most part. But then on the other hand, your heart is calling out saying, but, but wait, we got to change some things. Okay? So you might be in the process of doing so. You might be. Okay? You might be in the process with the King of Pentacles here. Because remember, the King of Pentacles is upright. So it's not all bad. It actually, and when I was looking at the energy, I was feeling the energy from this card. It was actually, I was feeling very good about it. So, for the most part, Divine Masculine, you could be integrating this love that you're feeling. And this could be why judgment is in reverse. Because you're trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out how you can answer this call that the universe is blaring at this point and, and figure out how you can integrate it into your life and still be the king of pentacles that you are. Now, I'm already picking up and I'm already hearing that there are some things you're probably going to have to let go of, but ultimately you're still the king of pentacles so you can manifest whatever you want. And let me tell you, Divine Masculine, you are a master manifester. And you need to believe that. 100% you need to believe that. You've gotten this far already, haven't you? Sure, you might have had help from people. But think about how much further you can go when you're like really aligned with yourself. Yeah? Let's get into your storyline. Starting you off with more mirroring, guys. The ace of motherfucking swords. Truth, clarity, it's all coming back to you, isn't it, Divine Masculine? Oh, now I'm starting to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now I'm starting to see why such and such happened. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Ace of Swords is coupled with the Six of Cups. Yeah, now I'm starting to remember. That contract we made? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but this is also clarity um, coming through the form of understanding some things that happened in your childhood that have gotten you to where you are right now. That have caused you to experience um, certain cycles. <clears throat> that have caused you to um, present yourself in a certain way, I guess. This is clarity of both. This is clarity on um, some things that happened from childhood. But this is also recognition of this deep soulmate connection with, between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Recognition. And that's a good thing. Okay? Moving forward, we have more... Me wow, this is insane, the mirroring this time. Five of Pentacles. But you're feeling left, left out in the cold, aren't you, Divine Masculine? Yep. Because you've been ghosted, haven't you, Divine Masculine? Yep. Because you were being a player. Or, you're feeling left out in the cold because you don't know how you can ever step into your Divine Masculine power. So you're kind of feeling like, I literally just heard, you're feeling like the universe has cheated you because your circumstances make it so that you can't be the king of wands that you know you are. Bullshit. Absolute, pure, utter bullshit. You are the one leaving yourself out in the cold here, Divine Masculine. Why? Because you don't want to stand up for yourself? Because you don't want to stand up for your truth and authenticity for who you truly are? That's not the universe. That's you, bro. You're choosing to do that to yourself. Remember who you are, Divine Masculine. 
I mean, it's imperative. Not just for the sake of the divine feminine. Fuck that shit. Like, get her out of there. Remember who you are, divine masculine. Stand up for yourself. Stand in your power. Stand in your power. Can't nobody tell you shit, bro. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I'm frustrated for you, man. Like, and, and, and you know what, though? You know what, though? I totally get it. Because I was there, too, once. That led me into a relationship and a marriage I didn't want to be in to begin with. Now, if he is watching, please don't get me wrong, okay? Don't get me wrong. I still appreciate every moment that we had in that relationship. But let me tell you right now, that happened because I was not standing in my power. I was not remembering who I was. I love you to pieces. If, if you are watching, I love you to pieces. And you know that. But I was not standing in my power. So ultimately, I had to go. And it was one of the hardest things I had ever done in my life. So Divine Masculine, I get it. I totally get it. But now it's time for you to step up. I'm going to turn this up, right? Step up. <laughs> Remember who you are and stand in your power. Can't nobody tell you shit, bro. I'm going to leave this upright. Judgment. I'm leaving it upright. Current challenge, Divine Masculine. Guys, this is scary. Ace of Cups. Upright. Your current challenge is offering the love you've been trying to offer maybe for decades for some of us. Yeah, there are people that have been on this journey for 30, 40 years. I can't even imagine. More power to y'all because let me tell you. I've only been consciously been aware of this journey for a little over. No, it hasn't even been a year because it wasn't until like November that I really figured out what was going on. Anyway, Ace of Cups and the Seven of Wands in reverse. Your current challenge, Divine Masculine, is laying down the defenses and being open about your emotions. 44. I just saw 44 again. Laying down your defenses and being open about your emotions. Oh, and there's a butterfly. There's a butterfly on this card, and that really just caught my attention because butterflies have been a thing for me lately. I've been seeing them a lot. Butterflies, dragonflies, and birds. But anyway, um, what I was going to say is you don't have to be open about your emotions with everybody. You don't. And I think that's what you're most afraid of. Well, no, not most afraid of. But you are very afraid of that. Like feeling like, well, if I'm going to be open with my emotions, then that means I have to do that with everybody. No, you really don't. There are certain people that you can do it with. But please understand, the one person you can always go to is your Divine Feminine. Always. My ears are ringing now as, as saying that. Always. There is nothing you can tell her or him that will make them hate you. You might get a, they may, they may get a screw face, be like, what are you talking about? That kind of thing. But you can talk to your twin about anything, period. You don't have to be afraid to be open with your emotions. It is a common miscon misconception that vulnerability is weakness. Oh no, honey, it's the exact opposite. Vulnerability, being able to be vulnerable is quite strong, is a huge strength. That doesn't mean you're running around making yourself vulnerable every chance you get, no. But in those chances or in those moments where you need to be vulnerable and you can follow through with it, that takes immense strength. 
Emotions are not weakness, guys. Emotions are your compass. Your emotions tell you whether you're going in the right direction or not. And I still, to this day, feel all the beauty in the world. Even though, even though this can be real shitty sometimes, I still feel all the beauty in the world. So I know I'm going in the right direction. Okay. Upcoming energies for you, Divine Masculine, we have the Emperor stepping into your power! Look at that, Divine Masculine. Being the Emperor that you know you are. This is the King of Kings right here, bro. Got that shit on lock. With... Ooh, yeah. whoa! The Seven of Swords in reverse. Holy shit! What? My mind is blown right now, guys. My mind is blown right now. I mean, those of you who aren't necessarily all that familiar with Tarot may, may be like listening, this, listening to this being like, what, what, what's the big deal? Well, check it out. Because the Seven of Swords has been floating around the Divine Masculine like crazy lately. And look, this full moon here. Look at that. Look, look, look. There's the moon, guys. So this full moon eclipse bullshit probably illuminated a lot of shit for you, didn't it, Divine Masculine? If not, this is the energy that's going to help you get rid of all this deception, lying, cheating, backstabbing, sleight of hand, lack of authenticity, lack of truth. This, I'm going to say in the upcoming energies for this would be like the next six months. Maybe even seven, because it is the seven of swords here. Could be three, the next three months. No, no, I'm sorry. What is that? Four. Next four months, even, because the emperor is number four. Excuse me. Stepping into your power, divine masculine. Your truth, knowing who you are. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look at that. Remembering who you are. Word. Yo, y'all, this is a, this, uh, mm, my mind is so blown right now. <laughs> this reading is intense. I am going to go ahead and flip this back over. Judgment. Because that's how it came out. So I'm going to leave it that way. Because that's where you currently are, Divine Masculine. And, and judge, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this judgment card here because I said I was going to um, leave it upright, but no. I'm going to put it back because this is where you currently are. It's not like you're really ignoring the call anymore. Yes, okay, some of you are. Oh. And the universe is saying, guys, you can run from this all you want, but there's going to be a point where you just can't run anymore. But judgment in reverse also is saying that you know, you're here, you're working with it. You're hearing the call, but you're working with it. Like you're trying to figure out, you're trying to integrate it into the, your physical life. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. What time is it? One o'clock. Okay. Let's get into, shit, this is a long one, guys. So we're already an hour in. Let's get into the animal spirits. Let's shuffle this up real quick. Lord of mercy. <laughs> All right, one more. Fire. Raccoon. Mm hmm. Those damn masks, guys. Those masks, they're coming off. Raccoon. You can't hide forever. And I, and yeah, I'm hearing some interference because I just heard, I said, you can't hide forever, and they said, yes, you can. Oh, yeah? 
right. If that's what you say so. I mean, if you say so, sure. Go ahead. Hide all you want. Source has other plans for you, bruh. Bruh, bruh. Okay. Divine Masculine. Woo! Octopus. Ooh. Divine Feminine. Snake. Shadow Dynamic. Vulture. That came out last week. Mm -hmm. Illuminated Dynamic. Phoenix. Fuck yeah. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's get into this. Octopus. For Divine Masculine. Boop. Oh, there it is. Damn. Reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind, paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that's what it's meant to be to be, quote, close. If you notice, after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be, very, it may be a very old habit to change. And what did I say in the beginning of your spread, Divine Masculine? You are learning to set boundaries. Why? Because people have been using you. They latched onto your power and said, mm, I can get some good stuff from you. They deceived you, cheated on you, stole from you, definitely stole energy from you, usurped your power. And that's exact. And as I was reading this card, Octopus, I was understanding that you, you're not necessarily the octopus here, Divine Masculine. You could be. You could be. But these other people around you or these other situations around you, that's the real octopus in the room. <laughs> when in balance, octopus is interested, engaged, and intelligent. When out of balance, octopus is needy, clingy, and lacks courage. To bring into balance, one must take some space to oneself, and maybe do some talk therapy. Therapy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Divine Feminine, you have Snake. Please, please, please don't mind the manicure. <laughs> um, yeah, Snake. Here we go. Guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of, quote, unawakened or, quote, untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How can you stir it from slumber? An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. The snake card appears when there is no more time to waste. <sighs> wow. So yeah, Divine Feminine, this is talking about your unawakened potential. This is talking about you getting to work, getting to mission, doing what you came here to do as an individual. Tap into your power. Tap into your essence. Tap into that which makes you, you, Divine Feminine, and live from that place. Not the place of who you could be with your Divine Masculine. Not the place, not the place where who you could be if you had X, Y, and Z. No. Be from the place of which you already have. Yourself. Mm. Powerful message. <laughs> All right, the shadow dynamic. Oh wait, I'm sorry. 
When in balance, snake is prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, uh, snake starts and stops many things. To bring into balance, one must practice kundalini yoga and meditation. Y'all, I've been talking about meditation and kundalini for weeks. Especially with the Divine Feminine. Meditate, girl. Meditate, meditate, meditate. I am not the only one that is saying this. You too, Divine Masculine. You could really, you could really benefit from... from, from blah, 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 blah. See? I'm getting all tongue-tied. You could really benefit from some meditation if you're not already doing it. But I feel like you are. Most of you. Some of you. I wasn't expecting that, Divine Masculine. <laughs> okay. Shadow Dynamic. We have Vulture. And yes, this did come out last week. This is air. Here we go. Guardian and Purifier. Essential for rebalance. The Vulture is perhaps the most misunderstood creature of all. This intriguing bird balances our ecosystem and prevents the spread of disease. It does the dirty work that no one else wants to do and cleans up our messes. The vulture appears when there is a situation that needs to be purified or brought back into balance. Remember, the vulture is greatly undervalued. What you thought was a mistake or tragedy is a blessing in disguise. All right, so this is a specific specific message for any of us that, like, that's whatever shit that popped off. It's not what it seems, guys. Blessing in disguise. Message. Mm -hmm. When in balance, Vulture clarifies and reveals wisdom. Hello. When out of balance, <laughs> Vulture is aggressive and dramatic. <laughs> to bring into balance, one must clean your space and sage. I've got my trusty sage smudge right here. I love sage, guys. Oh. Love it. Okay. The illuminated dynamic. Motherfucking vulture, y'all. Can I get an amen? Vulture? No, Phoenix. <laughs> I'm feeling myself too much. <laughs> Phoenix. Not vulture, Phoenix. But actually, that's why I said that, because vulture is allowing the Phoenix to rise. From the ashes risen. Feeling myself way too much. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. Freedom from suffering and past karma. Reincarnation. The Phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or, quote, burning bridges with rage. The Phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through practice and dedication, also known as tapas. The essence of the phoenix is, when, is with us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. At that very moment, the spark of phoenix is lit and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer run from who we are, what has happened to us, or what we have done. The, quote, stuckness and, quote, dead weight fall into the ashes and a lightness and clarity emerge. As the stagnancy continues to smolder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up and we begin to re recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It's a sign the fire of transformation is upon your wings. Didn't the phoenix come out last week too? It came out recently, I know that. But even as I'm reading this right now, I, uh, something came to mind. At some point, moving on, from this moment, from the moment you see this video on, I don't care if you see this video a month after it's posted, whatever. This is a timeless message right now. Specifically this part of the message, but this reading is timeless anyway. Moving forward, should you start to lose faith, and this is something for myself too, sorry. Should you start to lose faith? Anytime you see a bird, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember what's going on right here, right now. Birds are a big message for the Twin Flames that I'm channeling for right now. Okay? All right. The Phoenix and the First Chakra. The ancient yogis believed that our heaviest karmas reside in the first chakra. 
This earthy, this earthen center is also called Muldara, our root chakra. The, the ascent of the phoenix begins here, and as the entanglement of karma is slowly burned, it rises from the ash toward the navel center. Again and again, it makes this journey from first to third chakra, purifying our essence, freeing us from the past. You are not your past. Your past does not and will never define you. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? I want to close this reading out with some uh, Lightworker Oracle messages. One more shuffle, and then I'm just gonna let the cards fall out. I feel like two. Two. All right, two messages, please, spirit. For the twin flames. One. Orbs of light. Okay, there are three. Sixth ray of devotion. And unplug from mass consciousness. 1, 11, 11 on the counter, y'all. Card number 40, Orbs of Light. Card number 43, Sixth Ray of Devotion. And card number 7, Unplug from Mass Consciousness. Forty-three boils down to a seven. So that's a good thing. We're going to start with card number 40. Orbs of Light. Wow, this is, this is such a powerful reading, guys. I'm like, I'm, my mind is blown. The spiritual worlds are delivering a message to you. You may have already heard it through telepathic reception and mistaken it for your own thought. Yet, it is inspired by your higher guidance, those spiritual beings that love you without condition. It is an answer to a question and guidance to increase your happiness. It is possible to pray without realizing it. The universe is lovingly listening to every thought and feeling in your heart and mind. When you intentionally speak to the universe and ask your higher guidance to help you with an issue, it is a powerful way to call the light into your life. It works, often quite rapidly. However, sometimes we ask for help without being so aware of doing so. Worrying about an issue or pondering a question are ways this happens. There are orbs of light around you. They are spiritual beings that love you. These orbs contain information and energies that help answer questions and worries through the intelligence and love of the higher spiritual worlds. That information might come through a song, a phrase, a feeling, or a, or a color, or a symbol that unlocks awareness in the deeper re recesses of your mind. Orbs are always around us, but appear in more concentrated form, both in quantity and quality, in certain places and at certain times, including when your energy is in a particularly soft and receptive, high-frequency state. Orbs naturally gravitate towards high energy. It, this doesn't mean you have to be on the go constantly. Higher energy can be created when you are very still by raising your frequency to a higher vibrational state. You can do this by regularly meditating on love and healing. You can place yourself in a state that, most attract, that is most attractive to orbs of light by relaxing, opening your heart chakra, uh, yeah, yeah, and feeling good. You are also most likely to perceive them around you in this state, which can be a fun and beautiful experience. Orbs are often only seen in photographs where they appear as soft balls of light. If they are enhanced and magnified, patterns and symbols and faces can sometimes be seen within them. This is part of the loving genius of the spiritual world. The way that light can reach the earth in form, helping to raise frequency from fear to love. Okay. Excellent message. Moving on, card number 43. Sixth ray of devotion. The sixth ray of devotion bestows the qualities of persistence, unwavering focus, and intensity of feeling. It is a gift of the strength to move mountains with your will for what you love. 
When the sixth ray of devotion appears, you are being given guidance that even if you do not seem to have much worldly power right now, the power of your beliefs can conquer obstacles. The archangel Uriel helps to receive, or, I'm sorry, Uriel, helps to receive the blessing of the sixth ray now. Archangel Uriel. That's my homie, guys. I've actually been praying to him for help with these readings lately. My home slice. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit of this because I mean, we're already an hour and 15 minutes into this reading, but it's worth it. You are receiving a blessing of the sixth ray of devotion. It is serving your soul growth and will help you develop faith in your principles and trust in the power of your beliefs. You will be able to recognize and appreciate the extraordinary strength within you and realize that you have enough willpower to keep working towards your dream, overcoming any obstacle until you are divinely successful. The sixth ray reminds you of the power of love, which can conquer anything and everything. Love is an empowering, motivating force far stronger than fear. Love is the foundation of authentic spiritual devotion. Devotion to the divine empowers us to bear burdens, overcome obstacles, and manifest all manner of beautiful visions in a world that may at first assure us that our dream is not possible. The sixth ray blesses you with spiritual stubbornness and sacred rebellion against all odds. Fuck yeah. The challenge with the sixth ray is not to become so anchored in your beliefs that you become fantastic. Uh, fanatical, judging others because their beliefs are different. You can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people. I say that all the time, that the ways the universe calls you home to love are unlimited. I say that all the time. Wow. If you do not honor this, you may try to pull people from their own path, which can create unnecessary struggle for them and unnecessary karma for you. The best way to honor the blessing is and minimize the challenge of this ray is to share your truth with an open heart and open mind. Share without agenda. For those working with this energy, the power of mind and emotions will come into focus. You may need to channel your emotion and mental power into worthy projects or practice balancing your intensity with lightness of heart and playfulness so you don't become harsh or despairing if things appear not to be working out the way you believe they should. Then your faith can remind you love always finds a way. When Archangel Uriel connects with you, a tremendous power, the power of Earth, is brought to your aid. Uriel brings healing energy and an ability to cause real effect in the physical world with your mental and emotional power. Remember, you are here to shine your light. Others can choose to use your light to see by until they are ready to discover their own inner light or not. It is not anything you need to worry about. Simply live your truth Trust in your heartfelt beliefs and devote yourself to love. Um, 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 um. Okay. Finally, as the sixth ray has a special connection to religion and love, you are asked to hold the healing power of love in your heart for all those who are evolving through a life experience involving religious practice. This can help counterbalance the judgment and fear that exists in the hearts of many towards religions that are not their own or that have been a vehicle through which abuse through which abuse has taken place. Religion on this planet at this time needs love, support, and encouragement to evolve, heal, and grow in whatever way ultimately serves divine love. It's so funny because I am very spiritual. I'm not religious. I never was in this lifetime, even though we, I did go to church, you know, I grew up Catholic and all that. I was baptized. I was never a religious person. Um, I was always very spiritual. And when I talk to people about how I understand religion, I say, I, I feel very much that religion has a very good, necessary place in human evolution because I see it as a stepping stone towards greater spirituality and that's where my where my thought of there are as many paths to god there are as many paths of spirit to walk as there are people 
And all of that, all of that is in this card right here. And it's so funny because I've lately I've been realizing that I have a really strong connection with Archangel Uriel. Well, look at that. <laughs> okay, enough tuning my own horn. Let's go to card number seven. Holy moly, this reading. I mean, yeah, it's almost an hour and a half long, but damn, y'all, damn. Card number seven, unplug from mass consciousness. There is a belief system based on fear, doubt, and distrust that is known as, quote, mass consciousness. It says it's safer to stay with the crowd, not to question what you have been taught. It says you cannot trust the divine to take care of your financial well-being or your emotional needs. It says you should be afraid and not take risks. It says that if you dare to stand up and live your truth, you'll be lost and alone, humiliated, rejected, or even destroyed. You are being guided to unplug from that system of beliefs. You are capable of a more creative, loving, and soul-satisfying way of living. To access this, let go of the way that is too small for your soul. You are brave and aware enough to think outside the square, beyond what society or your peers may consider, quote, normal. You are supposed to be questioning things right now. You are in a transition from one way of thinking to another, opening up a new world which you can trust enough to live in with peace and happiness because of the upgraded new beliefs you are cultivating. No matter how others may resist or criticize your choices, perhaps your new ideas take away from the world they feel comfortable in, your higher guidance encourages you to keep opening your mind to a more loving, higher reality. If you have been thinking along new lines and wonder if you are going crazy, your guidance tells you you are doing a great job. You are not crazy. Trust yourself. You are thinking in ways that do not belong to mass consciousness. It can seem scary at first, but once you realize the benefits gained from unplugging, you will enjoy the process much more. It will free you and empower you to live a life of your own choosing. Opportunities and connections can open up to you in ways that defy your old beliefs. Sometimes breaking from the, accept, from the accepted norm, doing things differently, or being considered weird to family, colleagues, and friends is a sign that you are breaking away from the consciousness of the masses, which is not compatible with your own higher frequency consciousness. You were born to bring a new vibration of awareness to this planet. You will find those who can benefit and even love you for this difference, and those who are challenged or fearful of you for it. Either way, you can love and approve of yourself, nourish relationships that support you, and have compassionate detachment for those that do not, without compromising who you are in truth. So keep unplugging yourself, one layer, thought, word, and deed at a time, from that which the mass consciousness would have you buy into, more stuff, more fear, more competition, more doubt, and more suffering. You can challenge any thought you don't want to have. Free yourself. You have the power to change your world and the world we live in as a result, one liberating thought at a time. Whoa. Do you like my hole? <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing, but this shirt is really, really comfortable. I love it. Anyway, is your mind blown? Because mine is. <laughs> All right, I won't take any more of your time. We're at, whoa, one, two, three, four, four, guys. Whoa. I literally looked at the counter just as it turned to one minute, one hour, 23 minutes, and 44 seconds. I love you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be at Om Shanti tomorrow. Um, I need a break. I need a day off. We all need a break. We all need to take, we all need to take this in. We gotta take this message in. Jesus. Self-care, guys. Self-care. Take some baths, a nice salt bath. Go to a spa. Spend the day out in nature. I don't know, work on your art, work on your writing, do your hobby, do your thing, do you. Get back to you, guys. Disconnect from the, un unplug from the mass consciousness. consciousness. Step out of the matrix, y'all. That shit's coming down anyway. 
Oh, oh, grr. <laughs> I love you all so much. I'm going to stop taking up all of your time, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next conversation. Yeah? Take care. Bye.